So uh, I'm just going to get started and we've got like a few minutes of slowly starting the session anyway. So if people join late, they should be okay. Uh, so welcome everyone to our first uh, priority thematic discussion. Uh, you are in, just to make sure you're in the right spot because there were four parallel rooms. Um, you are in the room that is going to be looking and focusing on our um, localization uh, priority and specifically um, transforming how child protection works in humanitarian action. Uh, so welcome, welcome. If this is not where you wanted to be, you still have time to jump out of this room and into one of the other ones, uh, but hopefully we're all in the right spot. Um, so just some quick, uh, assuming my screen, ground rules. Uh, these are the same for everybody. Uh, so we'll be here for about an hour and a bit today. Uh, you know, please keep yourself on mute. Please, you know, be participate and engaged. We are going to try our best to stay on time. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and we look forward to having you all here. Um, with regards to video on or off, um, you are encouraged to keep it on, but I understand that A, bandwidth is a problem, and B, sometimes people just, you know, you just really don't have it in you to have your video on. That's totally okay. Um, if when you're in your breakouts, you know, you can, it's obviously a lot more fun with your friends when you're discussing if there's only five or six of you, if you can see each other, um, but, uh, but we'll leave that to you. Uh, one important sort of logistical note, uh, when we get to breakouts later today, um, if there are enough people who would like to speak in a different language, uh, namely Arabic, French, or Spanish, uh, we, will, um, we will try to accommodate that. Uh, what we need you to do is to put that in your name. So um, hopefully most people know how to, to rename themselves on Zoom. Uh, it's a little bit different depending on what format you're on. So I can't talk everyone through it. Uh, but usually if you hover around your picture, there's a little menu and there's a rename option. Um, if you, you know, in front of your name, so I'm doing this right now, you know, if you put the, the first couple letters of the language you want. So if you look at me right now, it says AR. Um, that will be helpful so that we can see, okay, yes, there's, you know, a group of people who want to, you know, have their discussion in Spanish and we'll put you together. Um, otherwise, we will stay in English uh, and, and sort of randomly allocate you later on. Um, we do ask if you're in a language group, speak whichever, you know, whichever language it is that you're wanting to, but if you could write your answers in English just for the benefit of sharing them back easily afterwards, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, so, oops. Uh, so we're just going to do a very quick icebreaker before we get started. Um, Kat, I think this is over to you. Um, there's a lot of people joining from many, many countries. So if you can all click on the link that is in the chat um, and put, uh, you know, join this little map. Um, I will actually do this real time as well. Uh, and we're just going to let everyone know where we are and where we're joining from. So you should see me soon. I'm somewhere, somewhere over here in Canada. And now there. Okay, that's probably not exactly right. This is a test of your geography skills in addition to in addition to your technology skills. How accurately can you place yourself on a map? Um, I bet you did not know or expect that that's what we were going to do <laughs> when, when you came here today. Um, but it is nice you know, in the absence of being able to actually be in a room together, um, it is nice to see where we all are uh, and where we're all joining from. So uh, as you and can see. I was going to say, if anyone's having trouble with it, um, please just click on the map. I know it doesn't look like there's anywhere for you to type yet. Um, if you just click on where you're hoping you live um, or you're <laughs> connecting from, uh, there will be a box that pops up that allows you to type. Yeah, you could alternatively actually put your name and literally where you are. So I've just changed mine. Um, so I'm in Toronto at the moment. I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. Just a little icebreaker, give everyone an idea of where we are. If you've just joined, welcome. Uh, we're having a little icebreaker. Uh, we're just identifying where we're all joining from. Um, you have not missed much other than to uh, reassure everyone that you are in the localization room, that we are talking about um, funding today, and, um, uh, and that if you wish to participate in a language breakout group, so in a breakout group that is speaking French, Arabic, or Spanish, 
to please rename yourself in Zoom and at the start of your name, put which language you want. Uh, and if there are enough people, we will, we will group you together. So welcome one and all. All right, so, oh, somebody managed to put a heart. Okay, someone is much better on this program than I am. That's all I can say. Whoever is in it, uh, good job. <laughs> uh, I'm so impressed with that. Okay, all right, so we have people from a little bit all over uh, and people with much more advanced tech skills than me, <laughs> which, which is not saying a lot, but still. Um, so we'll just jump in. That was a little bit of an icebreaker. It's nice to see you. It seems most of us are either in Europe, North America, or um, Sub-Saharan Africa in this group, and I think, and the Middle East. So we're this side of the globe. Um, that makes sense from a time zone standpoint. Um, we are here today, and I'm gonna just share my screen quickly to start unpacking. Uh, the Alliance strategy. So if you were with us in the previous session, this is our overall structure. Uh, if you weren't with us, the Alliance has a new strategy. It is going to be launched soon. Uh, we have an overarching goal and four priorities. And where you are right now is to discuss strategic priority two on localization and transforming how child protection works in humanitarian action. Um, I'm going to just talk us through a little bit more on that priority um, ahead of us getting into a conversation in more detail today. This is of course dependent on my slides working there. Um, so just to start, before I jump into the priority itself, uh, if you joined us last year, if you were here at the annual meeting and you were with us and specifically me on the strategy day, um, when we kicked off this process, we did actually have a conversation on localization and we felt it was important to recap that a little bit because what we do not want to do is, you know, have you come year after year and have the same conversation over and over and then get nowhere. Um, I think we all know what that feels like, um, and that is what we're trying to avoid. So last year on localization, we spoke about why is it important for the Alliance to work on this? So why should it be a priority? Those arguments were obviously very successful because it has been taken on as a strategic priority in the new plan. Um, and what do we need to do to make progress? So I'm not going to read through all this, but these are just some of the answers verbatim that were shared last year that uh, we need to um, you know, reflect better the lived experiences of the children and families communities we work with, that we need to change the word, um, and we will come back to that, um, that we need to improve how we work and how we partner and, and the nature of our relationships fundamentally with, um, with communities, with local organizations, with national actors, with governments even, um, that what we're not trying to do is basically replicate little mini INGO structures in everybody else, but really um, take a ground up approach and, and transform, which is the word that we're using for the strategy, how we work. Um, and that that is difficult and that is not easy, but that that is essential. Um, so these were some of the, you know, how everyone felt last year. Um, we actually then went on to see what specific actions could the Alliance take. I'm just showing that picture. Uh, but you saw that a lot of people spoke around actions about what the Alliance itself could do. Uh, what we as a sector could do around our programs and what advocacy was needed. Um, and I'm starting with these points because um, I want to now take you to the actual strategy and to the localization section. Um, and hopefully you'll see how we've tried to reflect and take on some of what was said last year and what, what the membership kept telling us over and over was essential and important. Um, so localization, the goal for the strategy is the child protection sector transforms its way of working rooted in the sharing of capacity and the sharing of expertise, of opportunities, and an intentional shift of power and resources to community, local, and national actors. That is the goal. Um, and I think everyone off the bat recognizes that that's not something that we'll achieve and check and be done with in five years, uh, but that is, is essential to start and that it is necessary to start. Uh, meaningfully, intentionally, and purposefully working on this. And so we have chosen the word transform uh, because we feel that that is what has to happen. It's not just a change, it's just not a shift. It is truly um, flipping over how we do a lot. Um, and also recognizing that localization goes beyond child protection, but what we can do as a, as a community and a group is, is look at how we work and how we work together uh, and, and shift that as as our piece and our contribution. So that is the goal. The goal has, bear with me, seven objectives in this section. It is the largest by far. Um, and I think you'll see it is because there was so much that needed to be done um, across different areas. So we grouped them. 
So we have two overall objectives um, in the localization section. Firstly, uh, foster and promote greater action on the sharing and shifting of power, influence, and leadership. So this is, this is the goal in an objective. Um, there's a lot of advocacy that needs to be done. There's a lot of reconsidering the structures that we have. There's a lot of uh, changes to how decisions are made uh, and who makes those decisions. And so a lot of that is captured here. Um, and the session, this off, the second session on localization, we'll, we'll go into this one a little further. Um, second overall objective, promoting the importance um, and facilitating opportunities for direct and flexible funding to go straight to community, local, and national um, actors, child protection organizations. Again, we do what we can in our sector. Um, and that's the conversation today. So I'm gonna pause on that because we will come back to it. Then we have a series of uh, objectives around the alliances governance and structure, which really relate to um, how opportunities uh, for uh, community and national and local actors um, are, are expanded, how they are made accessible opportunities for leadership, opportunities for influence, uh, and to engage within the alliance. Um, and so again, that's actually going to be discussed in more detail in the second localization session um, after this one. Uh, and also um, making the products, the tools, the guidance, the platforms, the events more accessible. Um, that can mean uh, ensuring that languages are available. So this session, for example, is, is being translated as we go on. Uh, it can mean um, you know, making things accessible even just in a, in a lo-fi way so that if you're somewhere where you don't have great internet connection, you can still access, you can still download, you can still engage. Um, so this breaks out in a lot of different ways. Uh, and lastly, we have a series of objectives that talk to the broader sector and the Alliance being a big uh, and influential actor and network in that sector. Um, this is where we see a lot of objectives around changing the culture, how we work together, how we partner together, um, the kind of exchange and sharing and, uh, and even recognition of what is knowledge, what is capacity, what is, uh, what is um, learning and expertise and, and how, how we relate that to each other. Um, and, and uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, there's a really big focus on learning and development throughout the whole strategy. And so uh, increasing uh, opportunities around that uh, for all actors. Um, and in particular, institutional capacity, which was a big point that came out of last year, that that needs to be made more prevalent. Um, so those are the objectives. I have talked through them very quickly, but that is because I do not want to take up more time from our session and the substantive part of our session. Um, you will all have access to the strategy soon. You can go into more detail. You can see all this. Um, what I can say is that we very much heard everyone saying we do not like the term localization. It's not quite the right word. We are using it for recognition, and we say in the strategy, the intention is to find something that's, that is more appropriate for the type of change and, and transformation that we are talking about within our sector, and that that needs to be led by the members and by um, the, the organizations, um, the local and national and community organizations that participate within the Alliance. And so it's essentially a placeholder term while we work to change and to, to, to set up the ways that we will, that we will carry on going forward, the relationships we will have, um, and, and language will come with that. Uh, so I just felt that was important because that was a really big point. Um, and just, I think it's important to say we heard everyone last year and what we're trying to do is carry forward those actions. And so today we will start from, from a new point of time. We're not gonna have the same conversations um, and I'm gonna hand over to um, Fatuma, Kamal, and I think Riyadh is here as well. Uh, we are very fortunate to, to be joined by them today. Fatuma works for the Child Protection AOR. Some of you may know her already. Uh, Kamal is, is her counterpoint at the, at the counterpart rather, at the Global Education Cluster. And uh, Riyadh is one of our um, own Alliance members. He's on the Alliance Steering Committee. Uh, and I think informally the head of the localization task force, which, which needs a bit of a boost. So uh, if you're interested in knowing more about this priority or about the Alliance's work on localization, there is um, a Google form that we are sharing throughout today. Sign up, check localization, and we'll circle back to you um, in time. And uh, for now, it's my turn to stop talking and start listening. So over to you, my, my dear colleagues. Thank you, thank you, Lyal. Um, so I will be speaking a, a little bit more about the, the second objective, which is about uh, how the ways and opportunities of uh, facilitating uh, more direct and flexible funding for local organizations, including community-based organizations. Um, 
uh, maybe just a brief introduction. Uh, as Lyal mentioned, my name is Kemal, and I work, uh, I join from Istanbul, Turkey, and I work for the Global Education Cluster as Localization Specialist. Um, so we can go with the next slide. And first of all, let's take a uh, let's take the snapshot of what the funding situation is currently for the child protection sector. Um, we can click one more time to show the first graph. So this graph is from, uh, with thanks to uh, Child Protection uh, Global AOR, um, we had this data from the FTS, the Financial Tracking System, which shows that uh, currently there, uh, there is about a half a billion dollars of uh, funding needed for, um, uh, for child protection interventions. And that, that's what's reported in the uh, global humanitarian needs overviews. And uh, the funding level is at 8%. So it's about $50 million funded. And there's a huge, huge gap. As you can see, it's uh, about 92%. Um, when you click one more, we'll see how this existing funding is distributed according to the uh, reports in FTS. So you can see that 57% um, of that funding, the one on the left, is uh, going to the UN agencies, and 37%, uh, 18, $18 million, is going to intern, other international organizations, including NGOs, international NGOs. And only 5% of it is going to national and local organizations, so about $2 million. So this obviously shows us the, 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 the huge funding gap, and within that gap, the, how small local organizations are allocated with, uh, with funding for child protection. Next slide, please. So um, in this session, we'll be speaking and collectively we'll be um, discovering what, what opportunities there are for uh, more direct funding. But when we speak about funding, um, we, there are different things that we should be considering. So first of all, it's what role the Alliance and its members can play to uh, create more uh, opportunities for direct funding for local organizations. Um, when we when we say that we should also be thinking about things like uh, how we can influence the um, the decisions the decisions when uh, funding allocations are made by the uh, by the donors at the at the global level or at the national level uh, how we can how can we increase um, the um, the influence uh, of local actors in 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 those decisions um, and and also the the in terms of the compliance structures and uh, requirements how can we influence those. And how what what we do what do we need to change for the uh, national organizations so that they qualify uh, better for these compliance measures? Um, the the thing is uh, the direct funding is uh, is one issue, but also the the type of funding is something that we should also be um, considering. So what type of funding is more desirable for local actors? When we think about long term and predictable funding versus more uh, short-term and ad hoc funding, which is uh, something that can be really um, unstabilize the uh, organizations. Flexible and unearmarked funding in terms of the overhead costs uh, and uh, targets versus um, inflexible and earmarked funding, which is usually what local organizations tend to receive. Um, and funding for, for capacity building, uh, both institutional and technical. Um, that's also another, uh, another um, thing that can make uh, funding quite desirable for local actors. And, and another question is, what role can the Alliance and its members play to increase quality funding? So one thing is to de describe what we, uh, how we describe or how we define quality funding and, and then looking into ways that the Alliance and its, its members, uh, the ways that they can influence those uh, quality funding for, for local actors. So we'll be discussing um, in, in, in smaller breakout rooms, we'll be discussing about around these uh, considerations. Um, I think that's all from me. Uh, Lyal, would you like to introduce or I can introduce this part as well? Um, I think let me, uh, I mean, you can introduce the questions if you want, but then I'm gonna walk everyone through the tool because it's a bit different. So we just want them to sort of be situated around it. Do you want to okay. introduce the questions and then I'll skip them to the tool? Sure, yeah. So right now we'll be uh, splitting into smaller breakout rooms and we'll be discussing um, what specific actions uh, li with linkages to the strategy, what specific actions can the Alliance and its members take to facilitate opportunities for direct and flexible or quality funding for 
community, local and national organizations. So you'll be um, discussing and you'll be um, uh, sharing some uh, specific actions. But at the end of the, uh, the session, we would like each group to come up with top, their top three uh, actions. And these actions or activities, they need to be uh, specific and they need to be also trackable. They need to be um, actions that can be monitored throughout the year. Um, you'll have 25 minutes to discuss and I think that's all for me to, to say here. Welcome back, Leal. Thanks. Okay, so um, we're just going to make it so that everyone can see the top threes a bit more easily. How did your discussions go? This is a, I know there's a lot of us in the room, but I will say open, open chance to, to come in. I, we saw a lot of actions go in. Um, what did everyone think? You can either speak or you can put in the chat. Did you come up with some uh, good the discussion, ideas? The discussion was Yes, great. I can see okay. yeah. it, is, it is very interesting and democratic uh, because uh, we, we, we come up with about uh, uh, so many points, but how about we end up picking three? I'm talking on behalf of group three, Sha. That's what I experienced. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel, did you want to come in? I saw your hand go up. Um, I, I, I think I, I wanted to react, but I think uh, Riyadh, who was the note taker, will speak on our behalf. I don't know. <laughs> OK. Oh, you well, can actually, do that yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> we note takers don't like to speak very much. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's why we volunteer to take notes. <laughs> well, well, I don't, I don't like either <laughs> of them. Um, yeah, okay. but uh, the You're... discussion was great. Um, like uh, we had more of a discussion rather than a brainstorming. We were fortunate to have a donor on our group. Oh, so nice. yeah, it it was great. Like to like ask direct questions and get direct responses. Okay. So we don't have lots of ideas, but yeah, we have some. So let me see. It doesn't look like everyone got three ideas. Oh no, maybe they did. We have some ideas here. So these are the, sort of the top three picked. Um, I'll just read through them. Everyone can see the green box, right? So we have uh, doing capacity assessments on institutional capacity to receive direct funding and provide support opportunities um, for those who need it and recognition for those who, who have the requirements. So this was from our group. We talked a lot about um, supporting uh, organizations that need it um, in order to, so that institutional capacity piece to, to meet requirements or have the systems and processes in place um, to be able to receive funding, but also recognition that many have that, have those systems, have those mechanisms. Um, and, and what is needed is the opportunity to actually apply and receive the funding directly. Um, building on the role of multilateral agencies to collaborate with actors, um, sustainability planning. We have a lot of great ideas here. Um, having donors transform and simplify their guidance to make reporting and accessing funding easy, easier, more, more accessible. Um, the Alliance, a lot of these look like, so it looks like we have a lot of advocacy actions, uh, which makes sense, and, uh, and uh, a lot of capacity uh, and, and sort of assessment and, and guidance development. Um, and process facilitating actions, let me say it that way. Um, what we're going to ask in these last few minutes now, so um, you know, giving everyone a chance to read all the actions in the green space. Um, oh my goodness, there's so many. <laughs> okay. Um, so two questions to think about when you read through these. Some of these actions are, are easier to do. Um, some of them, you know, we might think of as low hanging fruit, the things that we can, we can do quickly, we can do easily um, and, and sort of start making progress and start, start acting on, on um, this area. Some of them uh, may, may take more time and, or may be harder to do. Um, also, some of these will have, uh, you know, that smaller baby step type impact that, you know, if we do one action and then we do another and then we do another, we will move um, we will move our, our sector and we will move this issue forward. Um, and some of these will just have a huge impact. Like if we can get it done, the, the effect it would have, the opportunities it would create, the, the openings it might create for direct and flexible funding um, will be quite large. So what we wanna ask you all to do is if you still have the map open, um, please go to it. And if not, we'll share the link again. 
um, is to, to rate. So look through these options and um, I think we'll show you in a second what this is gonna look like here. See here on the side, the gray parts is to rate. How, how easy, so where are the low hanging fruit? What are the things that, that will be easier to implement on a scale of one to five? And then how impactful will these actions be? So when you click on an activity, thank you, Kat. When you click on an action to provide capacity building opportunities, how, so feasibility is like the, the easy one, how easy or hard is that to do? And how much of an impact would that have that individual action? So we're asking you all to reflect a little bit right now on these, these uh, your, you know, your collective top threes um, and, and to sort of rate how easy do you think they are? How, how impactful do you think they would be um, as individual actions? And then we're gonna see um, where we all voted. Layal, sorry. Yes. Yes. Um, as it is written in the chat, I think uh, it is. Uh, I, I do, uh, when you meant uh, uh -huh. how easy can be, do you uh -huh. mean uh, how the how how we can do it? How easy is uh, to implement this? So what because it's um, it's what is also written. That's what yes. we can do. But now we need to decide how and how easy is the how, if I can say. That's a good point. The how will come. So, um, so I, I, and I saw in the chat this, this idea of how are we going to do these things. This is going to be the hard work of implementing the strategy. Um, and we've mentioned throughout the session so far, and I'll mention it again at the end, you know, we have a form where we're asking people, if you're interested in the how, if you're interested in following how the Alliance proceeds with this, and if you're interested in, in future consultations on how and contributing to this, um, please please sign up, we'll just put your details. We will follow up later. We're not asking for a lot of information right now. We're just asking for interest um, because the how is important and the how is not going to be figured out by a small group of people. The how needs a lot of people. Um, so, and especially I think for, for the localization priority, which has the most objectives and just the most work, I think. Um, so if you're interested in, in, in more discussion on the how in contributing to that in, in, you know, there's hopefully gonna be a group that's gonna lead this work. If you're interested in supporting this, um, I do suggest, uh, you know, at some point opening that Google form, putting your name in, checking the localization priority and there will be follow-up later. Um, you know, these are the, these conversations are a starting point. They're definitely not an, an answer or a solution. Um, but I think we have some great ideas here. So the, the how we do all this is to come. I think what we're hoping to find out now, I'm like going to my page, is, uh, um, you know, which one of these, you know, where do we think will have the biggest impact of these actions? Which ones do we think will be, you know, sometimes it's it helps to start with something that's quick that you can get done a little bit more easily while you're working on the longer term things that take more time but might have a you know a, a, may take a few years to do some of these things um so if you wanted to rate them can. sorry Leia, can i can i stop you there i yes. think there is a problem with the mouth i uh, was just i was just realizing that as well because <laughs> uh, i'm like i can't sorry, rate I can them see. either yeah um two that, seconds let me let me see why it doesn't like us two uh, seconds everyone uh, we're on the brainstorm step. That's why. Yeah, I keep pulling. You. I keep pulling you to the, the rate. rating step, but it seems I don't know. Leal, are you on the um? Are In you the on the step? facilitator link? I just have a weird feeling something is pulling everyone back to the brainstorming link. Oh, it's back. Okay, yes. Hold on, I see it's back. I All thought right. I was in the. Do you want me to be in the facilitator link? I don't. Ideally, if I'm the only one in the facilitator, like at the okay. moment, just in case this that's what the issue is. Um, but it seems that it's back. Try again, so everyone. Try, please try again. It's just, you know, technology being a bit of a brat, but <laughs> um, but I do see, I do have you on the rate link up in the orange here. So you should see these bars and be able to, to rate the link. All right, so a few more seconds and then let's see. The like is also great that people are liking things because that kind of gives us a sense of which actions are more popular. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Time to switch over. 
I am so. moving everyone to the results, which means you guys won't be able to, to, to move anything, just so you're aware. All right. Um, and Layal, um, it might be a bit hard to see. Do you see the ratings on the side there? Yeah, more or less. So yeah, I wish I, I don't actually know if I can make it bigger. Apologies for that. Yeah, we're, we're learning as we go, everyone, as you can see. Like I said, this is an ultimate brainstorm on all fronts. Uh, but this is great. So you can see collectively that on the two scales, we've given different answers. Um, we have quite a number that, you know, like, so this is a high impact one. Um, uh, what is this? Creating and administering pooled funds exclusively for, that's such a great idea. Uh, that would have a high impact. You can see on the feasibility, it's in the middle because that's probably not the easiest thing to do, but it would have a great output if um, we can work towards that. Um, and so, um, yeah, so this is a great, um, I just going to wrap up because I want to give everyone a few minutes. Um, thank you so much for coming. I know we ran out of time a little bit, you know, different tools, but I think what you have shared um, are great list of ideas and actions that um, can be taken forward by the Alliance. Um, Kat, if we can just share the Google form. Like I mentioned, if you are interested in contributing more to this or just knowing more about what the Alliance ends up doing, if you're interested in that key how question, um, please just you know share your information and there will be follow-ups later on after the annual meeting and as the strategy is implemented. Um, Patuma, Kamal, and Riyadh, I wanna give the last word to, to you. Do you have anything you wanna say to wrap up before everyone? Just a very quick one from me. I noticed the priorities, some of them are really quite close, so I hope they can be grouped together. Like I saw, there are about three or four on capacity um, strengthening and a lot of it focusing on institutional capacity. So if those are grouped together, I think that would make a big uh, difference. Otherwise, I think they are very interesting ideas that have come through. And as somebody was saying, um, is to see later how the how is going to happen. Thank you. I have nothing to add. I'm just looking forward to seeing some actions so that we can speak over those actions next year. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for everyone also. Um, I think it was really interesting and uh, very excited to see where we're going. I just wanna say, uh, like always make noise about this, uh, especially for the, do the donors among us, advocate on our behalf also with your fellow, fellow donors. Um, we should have this uh, continuous um, discussion about localization, not from annual meeting to annual meeting. So I hope we can move that through. Thank you. You're muted, Leah. You're mute. I'm like, that's just a great way to end. I was just saying, thanks so much. I'm sorry we're a little bit over. If you're here for the next session, or if you're staying for the next session on localization, the funding, uh, sorry, the leadership and governance and decision making session, please stay. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, we will see you all hopefully at the other side um, on the wrap up. Thanks, Kat. Hello to those people that are just joining us now. Uh, we're just starting off with this question on the Mentimeter, uh, just to get our, get our brains working, to start thinking about the topic before we dive into the session. Great stuff. Thank you to those that are answering the Menti. Um, you can keep answering. We're going to just move to um, group map as well. So Kat, if you wouldn't mind sharing the link to the group map, we're going to have all the tools on the go. Um, so a big welcome to the session. To find out kind of who, who's here, where everybody is, we're just going to do a quick activity on the group map. Um, so if you can go to the link in a moment, once it's there, and you should see a world map. Here it is. Sorry, it's just giving me a little trouble sharing it. So it will be up on the screen momentarily, everyone. Thank you. So in the meantime, if we click on the link and it will take us to a map, then you can click wherever it is that you are joining the call from today and just pop in your name and we'll be able to see where everybody is. So I'm going to do it too. My computer will cooperate. 
seems like all of our computers aren't cooperating. <laughs> Um, so for those that this is new for, um, it's really, really simple. You literally just tap the map where you live, or it's a great test of your uh, geology. Hopefully you know where you live and you know where you are on the map, uh, but you can click on it and it will give you the opportunity to type your name. Sorry, I wrote Italy, but of course... <laughs> It's your name that you're supposed to type in. And it's not it a geography test. <laughs> <laughs> but that what I was meant to be saying is that I'm in Italy. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Sorry. Oh, Kat, a couple of people are saying they're getting the previous exercise, not the... Not well, the isn't map. that unhelpful? Give me two seconds and I'll double check my link. Hold on. I'm going to stop sharing just so I can look. It's just to get you warmed up anyway. While Kat does that, maybe I'll do my next bit of instructions. Um, so it would be really great if you could rename yourself and just at, before your name, put the letters of the language that you prefer when we go to breakout rooms. So if we have enough people um, with the different languages, we can set up breakout rooms that we'll discuss in those languages. So if you... Um, Go to the participant list and then find, find yourself. You should be at the top. You click more, you can rename yourself and then put your preferred uh, language letters at the beginning. So EN for English, AR for Arabic, SP for Spanish and FR for French, and then just rename yourself. That will help us organize the breakout rooms a bit later. And Katie, could I just quickly ask if you could click the link that I've just put in the chat? It, it says it should have been the correct one, but um when i click on it it takes me to the right place it will work for me as well i wonder if it would it be if people were in the previous session would that have uh, no it shouldn't be because i still have the previous session open as well but maybe anyone that's having this trouble if you can just close the previous session group map and then click on this link and, and see if that helps apologies for any trouble that people are having yeah it says it's it, taking them to it, the previous it session took well, me, really sorry. it took me again to the last one <laughs> Okay, I'm really sorry. I'm not sure why that's happening. <laughs> Everyone is saying the same. Well, never mind about the map then. <laughs> this was the icebreaker. We're testing everybody's tech. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let's um, let's keep going. I can see people renaming with their language. That's great. If anyone's not sure how to do it, then just send me a message in the chat and I can um, try and help you with that. In the meantime, I'm going to hand over to Eleanor, who's going to introduce the priority that we're going to be talking about. Yes, thanks, Katie. And you have done the accountability bit, so we can skip like a couple of slides ahead, like and move directly like to slide um, four. <laughs> You're all aware of like the etiquette for this type of meetings, so I don't need to go through that. And Katie has already explained the renaming bit. Thanks, Katie, for that. Pairing my voice a little bit. So this is just to situate again for those of you who were not here in the previous session, where localization sits as a priority within the broader 2020. 2021-2025 like alliance strategy. So you can see that it's strategic priority number two, localization, transforming our child protection works in humanitarian action. Now, I'm wondering, and I should have checked like whether like Riyadh was able to join or not, is here. And I'm over here. Thanks, Riyadh. I'm sorry, I've been jumping from one session to another and I'm just like losing my mind slightly. And uh, we add, and we can move to the next uh, slide, Kat. Like we had a conversation about localization last year and you can have both blocks of tests come show fully. And there were quite a few you know, good points that came out of the conversations and you were leading that discussion, if I recall correctly. So I was wondering, even if without going through the list, you were able to give like some of the highlights so that we can link our discussions today to those um, uh, inputs from last year. 
Yeah, sure. Um, if you would like to save some time, I think Layal did give some a brief about uh, the discussion last year in the earlier um, meeting. So, but I can give a, a quick one also. Like last year, we had uh, a great discussion about localization. We discussed uh, some some barriers. Uh, we discussed the uh, um, uh, the uh, um, contribution of local NGOs in uh, in the alliance. As you may know by now, over sixty five percent of uh, alliance members uh, come from a local or national NGO. Um, so we have identified like many difficulties, like uh, the uh, um, uh, structural capacity, like connections, the funding, um, lots of issues. Uh, and we focused also, as I said, about what um, uh, what barriers do we have to include more uh, local and national NGOs in that line. Alliance and what can we as an alliance do to have more contribution from the uh, uh, local NGOs? A great discussion about leadership uh, for like task forces, working groups, and the alliance itself uh, has been done also. Um, I'm, I'm really glad also to see that uh, most of uh, the, the issues are reflected in the uh, structural review that the Alliance did this year. Um, yeah, um, so that, that's a brief. Um, and uh, I had to give also like a, a brief and uh, I look forward to continue the discussion uh, throughout the session. Great, thanks a million, Riyadh. And, uh, you know, Riyadh is here, so you will be our link to last year's conversation and like, you know, make those bridges where necessary. And if we skip a point, do remind us. So if you can, let's now delve in into the priority itself. So if we can move ahead, like a couple of slides actually cut and show the main goal of like the, of the priority itself. So the main goal for the priority that has been included in the, in the land strategy is that the child protection sector should transform in its way of working rooted in sharing the capacity, expertise, opportunity, and, then ten, and, and an intentional shift of power and resources to community, local, and national actors. And we have talked a little bit about the transformation in the first like uh, word cloud that you were trying to set up. Now, I think this is within the priorities of the Alliance. I think like this, uh, the, lo the localization one is the one that is most multifaceted. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but there are several objectives to it like and we're gonna just look through them real quickly together. Of course, you need more time to go through the strategic document and we're gonna engage in a discussion on it right after. So if you can move to the next slide, please, Kat. So the first uh, set of objectives is around fostering and promoting greater action on the sharing and shifting of power, influence, and leadership with community, local, national, and child protection, sorry, local, national, child protection organization across humanitarian action, and promote the importance, uh, the importance of and facilitate opportunities to direct and, and flexible funding for community, local, and national child protection organizations. And I think the second objective is the one that you discussed mostly in the previous session, while we're going to be focusing more on the leadership aspects within this session, but we'll hear from Patuma on that. Let's look at the other objectives, please.
So the, the, the other set of objectives is about the increase. So there are a set of objectives that are more geared towards the alliance governance structure itself. So how we work internally. And the first one is around increasing inclusion and diversity within the alliance by facilitated membership processes and expanding opportunities for leadership, influence and engagement for community, local and national actors. So more inclusion and diversity within the alliance and then improve the accessibility and diversity of alliance products, platforms and events to reach broader and more diverse audience. So and improve the accessibility of our product. And then if we move to the last slides on objectives, you'll see that there are other objectives that are more geared towards um, transforming the sector more broadly, right? So we want to encourage a meaningful and principled engagement with community, local and national actors, recognizing them as equal partners in the development and contextualization of child protection standards, guidance, tools and interventions. Create and expand equitable opportunities to share, exchange, and showcase learning, knowledge, and expertise amongst community, local, national, and international actors across the child protection sectors. And then improve and expand accessibility and diversity of learning opportunities that strengthen child protection technical expertise and grow institutional capacity. Uh, so these last two objectives being more geared towards learning, objectives. So I have gone through the objectives and the goal of the priority. There is more to it in the strategy that you will have time to read through. Um, but now I would like to leave like the floor to another one of like the amazing speakers that we have today on this session. Uh, Fatuma, I would like to leave the floor to you. Will you kindly introduce yourself? Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena. My name is Fatuma Ibrahim, and I'm working with the Global Child Protection Area of Responsibility. I'm the focal point for localization. And I'm very, very excited to be part of this discussion. And, and even more uh, really excited to see that the Alliance and its members have prioritized localization in their strategic plan for the next five years. So for this session, I'm just going to do a quick introduction. Already, as Elena has mentioned, we are going to focus on leadership and decision making. And uh, the objective of this session is really to brainstorm on the overall objective one, which Elena has just mentioned, which is really contributing to the overall goal. So we are going to be looking at actions that would foster sharing and shifting of power, influence and leadership. But I think the most important thing here is the word intentional, that all this is going to be intentional. And it's really connecting to the priority goal, which focuses on transforming the way the child protection sector is working right now, looking at issues of uh, uh, capacity sharing, expertise, um, expanding opportunities and sharing of power, and not only power, but also resources with communities, local and national organizations. Second slide, please. Now, the Alliance has chosen to have a two track approach to localization, which I think makes a lot of sense. So on one hand, they are going to focus on internal governance and structures. Also looking at the processes and procedures because that's a good starting point. You need to look inward and change will always start from inward going out. But at the same time while they are doing that because this is going to be quite a process and it's not going to be easy to begin with, we have gone through it and it's really a tough one, but at the same time, they will be broadly looking at how they can transform the way 
the child protection sector is working right now, looking at the present culture, looking at the practices, are they really supporting leadership of local actors? Are these practices supporting uh, local actors, national actors to be part of the decision-making processes? Where is the locus of power? Where is it sitting right now? And who is influencing all those decisions? So those are the things that the Alliance is going to do using the two-track approach. And it's really a good starting point, but it's a heavy one. I know progress will be made. It may be slow in some ways, but it may be faster in some ways. Next slide, please. Again, going back to the uh, governance and structure, what the Alliance is looking towards doing is really increase, inc increasing inclusion and diversity within the Alliance. Looking at the membership, how is it now? How is it working? How can they facilitate that? How can they expand it? Where, is the, where are local and national actors sitting now as part of the membership? And then what opportunities exist for leadership that local, part, local actors, national actors can also join and play those roles? How can they be more influential? It's actually more than engaging. It's the focus here is on the leadership. It's on the, how they are going to be influential in the decision-making and looking at community maybe not the communities as a whole, but looking at community-based networks, faith-based networks, looking at local organizations and national organizations. And many times when we talk about local actors, national actors, we also mean the government at different levels or different government agencies. The Alliance is also hoping to look and improve accessibility especially looking at the products, who is now producing most of the products that come out of the Alliance? How is that happening? Are local actors part of it? Are they visible? Are they contributing? So those are the questions that will be asked to make sure that this access is provided to the platforms, to the events. Like for instance, I was very, very impressed uh, on Monday during the opening, the, uh, the keynote, uh, panel discussion was really representative of the diversity that we would like to see. Because local actors, national actors, international actors, we need to look at how each can provide the most part that they can do, looking at comparative advantage, not just because somebody is sitting there. Next slide, please. Now this slide, I wanted to use this slide to show that this struggle is not only within child protection. Even when we look at the whole humanitarian architecture, they struggle to now make local actors more visible, being part of the leadership structures, being part of the decision making processes. So this one comes from a presentation that Ocha gave at the global uh, cluster coordination, glo global cluster coordination group um, sometimes in, in June. What is really important is that we are now getting statistics because when you start having statistics, things become more real and you start seeing, okay, so maybe we need to set targets. Maybe this is where we need to move. So in terms of the coordination mechanism, they were looking at the clusters, sectors, and the areas of responsibilities. Every year, um, the clusters do what is called the cluster coordination performance monitoring. So this is the source of this information. So in terms of national leadership and co-chairs of coordination, uh, uh, groups, we find that only 19% of those are actually led by government or national NGOs. This is at the national level. At the sub-national level where you actually find that there are more local or national actors taking on this leadership, it's now standing at 25%. And for the technical working groups, the figure now is at 24%. This is for last year, 2020. And there are reasons why this also increased suddenly in 2020. And then when you look at the membership, according to this 49% of the membership of the 
cluster coordination groups are local actors. So if you look at the percentage of membership and then look at the percentage of where they are playing leadership roles, there's actually something really wanting. What is really important at this point to point out is that there's momentum that has been created because of all this focus on localization, uh, local actors coming up and talking and demanding their positions. But that has been really spurred on by the grand bargain, which ended last uh, this year, but the new one, Grand Bargain 2.0 has started and still focusing on localization. But most importantly, and the point I would like to end on is the fact that COVID brought a lot of miseries and a lot of challenges, but also it had some kind of a silver lining in the clouds, which was focusing and reinforcing the centrality of local and national actors in humanitarian response. It was very clear the role that they play. It was really, really reinforced. So we want to really ride on the momentum that has been created. Next slide, please. So we are now going to have the opportunity, um, at least I think we have about 25 minutes to discuss and see how we can identify op opportunities for increasing the participation of the community, local and national actors in the leadership and decision-making process of the Alliance. And I'm going to hand over to Elena Oketi to really provide the actual guidance to the breakout rooms. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I can see people coming back in. Uh, and that might be everybody. Um, thank you yes. so much for your, uh, your group work. We are going to take a look in a moment. Kat's just organizing the board to make it a little bit easier for us to see the priorities that you picked in your groups. Um, so I thought I'd just mention a few, a few themes that came out in, in most of your conversations from what I could see. So um, awareness raising definitely came up. So needing to do more to make local actors aware of the Alliance and, and how they can be involved. Um, funding came up a few times, so how we can, the Alliance can support access to funding for local and national actors. Um, building capacity for leadership roles came up quite a few times. Um, promoting the work of local actors and, and mapping local and national actors all came up. So here we go, now we can see, thank you Kat, the um, activities that you've prioritized from your group. So what we're going to do now is a rating activity. So I'm going to let Kat explain this because she can do it more clearly than me. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, this is just my second time doing it. And for some of you, it will be your second time doing it. So apologies if this is a little repetitive, but we want to make sure everyone has the opportunity. Um, so this is the rating section. You should all, you can see that it's orange up here, which means I forced you all to be in this section um, to look at it at the same time with me. What we're going to do now is you're going to look at um, all of these um, top uh, actions that you've picked. You can see on the side that there's this little gray bar here. So if you click on that gray bar, um, you have the opportunity um, to rate each of these. So we're going to give you just a couple of minutes as the session's almost over, maybe about three, four minutes to do the ratings. And so what we want to see is for this one, for this action, uh, strengthening regional approaches and working closely with existing regional networks. What is the feasibility of that? Is it easy to do? Uh, if it's not, move the bar to low. If it's high, move the bar up. We know that, you know, uh, that's a part of the, the whole plan, the big discussion that um, how, how are we going to do it? But that will come later. So for now, how feasible do you think it is to be able to do this? And what kind of impact do you think that's going to have? Is it going to have a low impact or a high impact? And you can just drag this little circle back and forth. Um, so I'm going to leave, um, I'm going to leave you guys um, with Katie for the next three, four minutes. Um, very quickly, go through it as fast as you can. We're almost done uh, to rate those. And then in a couple of moments, we will move to the results to take a look at that. Perfect. Thanks, Kat. Um, great. So if we can all do some rating, I might join in. 
All right, uh, Katie, I am thinking it is probably time. So everyone put down your mouses. Um, I'm going to move us to the results. Um, as uh, you'll be able to see, Katie, I know it's a little bit hard to see the bars on this side here, but uh, do your best to talk through that. <laughs> Amazing, thank you, Kat. Um, okay, great, it's a little bit hard to see. I'm gonna oh, I'm trying to look on my bigger screen. So it looks like um, increasing local and national representation in decision-making mechanisms, including the steering committee and core membership comes out as the most impactful and most feasible. So that's great. Um, Eleanor, I'm gonna ask you if there's anything you notice. We're gonna look at all of these results like more thoroughly for sure. Like I don't think two minutes like is um, sufficient for the uh, assessing the variety of inputs like that you have given. I think that there are some excellent points. I think that a lot of likes, just to share another indicator, are focusing on enhancing the technical and institutional capacities through mentoring and coaching for leadership roles. And I think that could be grouped with some of the other suggestions around like, for example, having um, local organization be as observers within groups and have like specific roles like to, to enhance their engagement. Um, there are other points which are more around financial funding and structural issues, such as, you know, barriers to access someone in my group like suggested we also do like a study like around what is preventing local NGOs access like to these roads within the alliance. All of these are very valuable contribution. Uh, I would like perhaps like just to thank our presenters that have been throughout like this session, Fatuma, Kemal and uh, uh, Riyadh because uh, your contributions uh, in the organization of the session is indispensable. And uh, um, we are gonna take these ideas forward and I think some concrete actions will be made into our work plan for like the organ for the alliance. So we'll try to make justice to all of this thinking. And um, thanks to the participants as well who have been here throughout. It was quite a large number of people that have engaged in this session. So I was really pleased to see. And um, I'm sorry for my poor French, like to my group. And uh, I think we want to leave you with a couple of minutes so you can jump off and then decide whether you are going to be joining like the next session. So I can conclude here. Thanks again, and Fatuma Kemal and uh,